Hey Tesla fans, Michael here with Evolution Tesla, where I cover the latest features, software, and self-driving tech from Tesla. We all know about Tesla's innovative over-the-air software updates, but now Tesla is taking it a step further, offering hardware upgrades to their infotainment system as well. I just got the infotainment system upgraded in my 2017 Model S, so let's do a side-by-side -side comparison and see the huge improvement in performance and tons of added new features with the new system. MCU2 sees a substantial performance boost for the navigation system. Not only is the frame rate drastically increased to a buttery smooth 60 frames per second, making map browsing a breeze, but loading of the maps takes a fraction of the time. Here you can see MCU2 take a mere 3 seconds to load the zoomed in map, whereas MCU1 took 22 seconds, and it hadn't even loaded the traffic data. The upgraded MCU's processor is obviously more powerful, but it also benefits from a faster 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection. Look how much quicker MCU2 switches back from satellite view to map view and allows for more operations while MCU1 merely draws the map. Watch how quickly the new MCU calculates the complicated route from Toronto to Vancouver. I sped up the footage here by 40 times. MCU 2 took 54 seconds to calculate the driving and charging time for the cross-Canada trip, while MCU 1 took an agonizing 8 minutes and 3 seconds. Similarly, a trip from Toronto to New York City took only 7.5 seconds on MCU 2, while the older model took over 3.5 minutes. The MCU upgrade sees a substantial improvement in the responsiveness of the interface. Setting screens used to run at a choppy 6 to 10 frames a second, but now runs at a smooth 30 frames a second. Other parts of the interface would render at around 12 frames per second, whereas it now runs at an incredibly smooth 60 frames per second. The new 5 GHz Wi-Fi module makes for a responsive internet experience, which is more than adequate for the average video streaming and software updates, though still much slower than the 500 megabits my iPad can achieve on the same router. Despite a rather poor 2-bar LTE connection in my garage, the LTE speeds were decent enough for typical video streaming needs, and I was able to achieve much better results with a stronger connection. The web browser is finally usable once again after a long period of being out of commission. It's not as smooth as your typical modern tablet or phone experience, but definitely a feature that you can once again take advantage of. With the MCU2 upgrade, we've seen a huge improvement in the responsiveness of the voice commands. Previously, it wouldn't even work half the time, uh, or there'd be a huge delay before it actually recognized your voice. But now it's almost completely instant. You hit the button and you can talk right away and say what you want to do. Take me to Whole Foods in Oakville. I'm cold. Here it increases the temperature by one and a half degrees. I'm hot. Here we have the opposite. Set passenger heat seater to level 2. Now you can see there's no delay in waiting for the system to listen to your voice. You hit the button and right away, turn off the seat heaters. Another thing I like to do sometimes if the camera's missing, I can quickly bring up the camera with the voice control. Show the camera. Previously I'd have some issues bringing the camera up with the unresponsive uh, infotainment system in the old uh, MCU. So I'd try to bring it up and I'd swipe and swipe and sometimes it wouldn't work and then it would come up and then I'd swipe and then it wouldn't go where I wanted to. But now as you can see, it's totally responsive. 
exactly where, where I want it to be. Bring it up instantly. Huge improvement. The MCU upgrade also brings a plethora of additional new features that the old system didn't support. By clicking on the parking sensor button on the camera screen, you can now see images from the left and right repeater cameras to see a more complete view of your blind spots while driving or backing up. One of my favorite new features we gain access to is the karaoke system. It turns your Tesla into a karaoke party room with access to what seems to be over 10,000 great karaoke songs at the touch of a button, with or without supporting vocals. It's unfortunate that you can't seem to sort the songs by artist or title, but you can do an artist or song search by clicking the bottom right button. Click the karaoke tab and type in your search. Say, for example, you want to sing along to some classic Canadian rock, and there you go. I'm quite impressed at how quickly it pulls up the karaoke video stream. Even though you can't have the lyrics displayed while driving, unless you override it as a passenger, you can still sing along with the instrumental tracks to practice your vocal chops while at the helm. Another huge added feature is access to in-car video streaming. There's Netflix, YouTube, Twitch, and Tesla's own tutorial videos. In the States, there's also access to Hulu, and likely more streaming services coming in the future. The system doesn't currently allow you to log into your YouTube account, but there's a workaround for that. Simply load up the browser, type in Plex.tv, hit the menu, and choose Sign In. Then you can sign in using your Google account. Here you will enter your YouTube email and password. Since the video streaming works through the browser, it will remember your Google login and use your YouTube account the next time you load up the YouTube app. In addition to the simple Atari video games, MCU2 supports more advanced games like Fallout Shelter, Stardew Valley, Cuphead, and Beach Buggy Racing 2 Tesla Edition. Beach Buggy Racing 2 is a battle-style racing game similar to Mario Kart, which you can control via the car's steering wheel and brake pedal, with on-screen touch controls, or with a wired console controller like this PlayStation 4 controller, which you can plug into the front USB ports. There's some fun touches like how the in-car game matches the model and color of your own Tesla vehicle, a black Model S in my case, and how the cars make the signature Tesla sounds as they accelerate. You can play two-player split-screen with your passenger for extra fun during those supercharger pit stops. Cuphead is an innovative hand-drawn run-and-gun platformer in the style of 1930s cartoons. It also supports a simultaneous two-player mode with two controllers, which can be loads of fun when it isn't absolutely infuriating. It's unforgiving and extremely challenging, but its short levels make for a great time killer while hanging out in your car. Thankfully, both Cuphead and Beach Buggy Racing run at a smooth 60 frames per second, so gameplay is very responsive and a joy to behold on Tesla's oversized displays. Another awesome feature that comes with the MCU2 upgrade is the much-requested dashcam viewer for reviewing recent dashcam or sentry mode video footage right on your in-car display. Simply load up the viewer, click the thumbnail of the event you want, and you can now play back the video right in your car. Tesla even includes a handy red dot where a sentry mode event occurs. This function greatly improves the practicality and utility of sentry mode, and has even been used to present evidence of traffic incidents to police on scene. Not only that, but the system now records footage from the rear camera for a total of four simultaneous video feeds. Overall, I'm thrilled with the upgraded infotainment system. It solved almost every issue I was having with my 2017 Model S, including unresponsive interface, inconsistent voice controls at best, and even some other issues that I didn't touch upon, like the really laggy volume controls, and it restored the operability of my Samsung T5 SSD that I use for the Sentry Mode, Dash Cam, and Music. Not only that, but it's added a ton of new features that we've been missing out on as owners of older model Teslas. I'm really impressed at how Tesla was open to listening to customers and offering this upgrade path. It's like having a brand new car, and I think it's worth every penny. 
Stay tuned for the next episode, where we'll go over all the changes that came with the full self-driving hardware computer upgrade. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you found these videos useful in your decision to purchase a Tesla vehicle, you can use my referral code here to get both of us a thousand miles of free supercharging. If this is your first time here, I hope you'll subscribe and click that bell so you can stay up to date with the latest updates in self-driving tech from Tesla. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see here in the future, let me know in the comments below. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you next time on Evolution Tesla.